beautiful strangers welcome to cat react i'm cat and i react to all films it's that simple you guys gave me suggestions i write them down and then i go through the list and i watch if that is something that interests you then please feel free to subscribe and also if you could hit that like button that really helps this channel out today guys i'll be reacting to a film called soap dish that title doesn't tell me anything um it has a whole bunch of people in it a lot of big names actually so i'm actually quite excited to um, go and check this film out so if you want to join me on the journey of discovering what this film is all about then go right hop on and let's go now our fifth nominee celeste talbert from the sun also sets both my guy you're at a hospital what was what was this he looks like he just got out of Mr. Hawaiian Tropic competition. And the award for best actress in a daytime drama goes to... Dude, be a little more enthusiastic. Come on. Celeste Talbert. Five minutes, Mr. Loman. Don't call me Mr. Loman. Call me alcoholic Albert Einstein. He has so many people to thank. My fabulous supporting cast, who gives a new meaning to the word support. Bitch. Hag. I hate her so much. Very supportive cast. Have a terrific evening. See you on the television. I'm home. What, no after party? Adam, did you watch? I won! <laughs> I tried to get home as soon as I could. What is this, like five or six? Oh, so this is just a regular Tuesday for her. Celeste, it's Adam. I'm at the airport. Goodbye, my darling. I have to go back to Sarah and the kids. It's Ooh. it's like a chemical thing. Ooh. Now this is going to be interesting. <laughs> I'm not gonna say I told you so, love, but this is kind of what you can expect when you start dating a married man. That's why you should just not do it. Just stay away from Mary, guys. It's just not worth it. Her daytime award-winning Tuesday is ruined. Get rid of her. You think that's easy? Give her Alzheimer's. Right. Rose is in the way. Fire Rose. Not with Celeste protecting her. You got me? God, Celeste, Celeste. I am 28 years old, okay? I need this to happen now. I have a public, okay? They write me letters. More Montana they write. Look at these! Oh, is that the hag from Casper? Oh, I recognize that creepy, ominous voice everywhere. Ugh. Oh, that, that voice just creeps into my soul. I hate this woman. Well, not her. This, you, know, you guys know what I mean. I make no sense. I know, guys. Sorry. I just... Oh. What are you looking at? Ah! Uh, yeah, I'm... Oh, I'm telling you guys. She creeps me out. She is the stuff of nightmares. I could never leave you. Oh. Ever. Oh. Ooh. Well, ooh la la. This is like the erotic version of Bold and Beautiful. It's amazing. David! 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 Hey, David! Great. Calm, calm down. Jesus. What Could you, you please name? point out to our new costume designer whose name I don't quite have Johnny yet? Johnny Miller, Miss Talbot. How do you do that? I don't feel quite right in a turban. What are you talking about? That turban is awesome. It really, like, signifies the whole look. Attention. No turbans for Miss Talbert. Oh, so she is a high-maintenance diva. Got it. I'm Lori Craven, and I'm an actress. I'm Betsy Faye Sharon, and I'm a bitch. I've got to, ugh, I've got to get on this show. Hi, Betsy. Listen, we need new homeless now. You know, good-looking homeless. This bunch is disgusting. Come on, Betsy! Okay, all right. Good-looking homeless? So I'm guessing you, you mean all the homeless people that are, you know, competing in beauty pageants. When can you start? What are you doing? Having a nervous breakdown. Have you gone insane? Do you know the word on the floor is that like you're crazed today? Well, does she look sane to you? Are you okay? Adam went home to his wife. <laughs> really? Oh. <laughs> I was up half the night thinking of all these men, these losers, all the way back to oh, no. Jeffrey Anderson. Listen, you went with him when you were a kid. I have to get off this show while I'm still alive. You could take a sabbatical. Six months you'd be gone. We'll just say that Maggie went to Tibet to visit with the Dalai Lama. No! What would I do on a sabbatical? This is all I know, this show! You have to drive that bitch off the show. I rocked my brain for ideas. I got it. 
We give her Bell's palsy. Do you remember what happened on Bold in the Brass? When they made Tiffany become incontinent? Thousands of sympathy letters, okay? I would kill to have you on all fours. Would you, David? Mm. Then you know what you have to do. Make Maggie a murderer. Where did his glasses go? He was wearing glasses literally seconds ago. He was wearing glasses when she was when the camera was facing him. Ooh, that's a mistake. Can't be one of the regulars. One of the extras or one of I don't the know. extras. One of the homeless, David. Ah, one of the homeless. That's cruel. David, ever since you took us to the Caribbean, it's been Jamaica homeless people sucking soup. That's depressing and it's expensive. Two words I hate. You know the words I like? I like the word peppy and the word cheap. Peppy and cheap. Quiz shows are beating us. I don't like this gentleman. Now, I have been the head of daytime programming here for a long, long time. When the ratings go down, you have to do something drastic. Might I suggest a murder? <laughs> a murder? An accidental murder of one of the homeless. Who would murder a homeless person? Ultimately, it's great for her. You're what? telling me you want her to murder somebody and you want it to be a listen, homeless listen, person. Listen, relax, okay? Listen, you. I have worked for this woman for 15 years. I have written every line she's ever uttered. And I ain't writing nothing garbagey like that. You understand me? What does she say? She loves it. <laughs> this is very telling. Us writers have more power than people realize. Everything you see on TV, or every show, every film, starts with a writer. Look at the hooters on that one. Mark's good. I think we should kill that blonde one. You can't kill a blonde woman. You'll drive half the men who are watching That's this. her. She does. David, give me a break. She's got a face like an angel. Celeste should kill her with that face. It can work. Well, what if she can't act? That never stopped us before. We make her mute. Well, if she doesn't speak, we don't have to pair as much. Huh. A homeless deaf mute. What could be more pathetic? A homeless deaf mute. Let that sink in. When the soup lady arrives, something inside of you snaps. Something mental. A cracker. Exactly, exactly. You reach into your bag and you grab the knife. It's really big. That's not a knife, love. Take the knife and you lunge at the soup lady. <gasps> Who do I lunge for? Maggie. Here you go, Mr. Miss Albert. Celeste Talbot. Okay, boys and girls, we are going to tape this rehearsal. Is she is she starstruck or something? There's something really dubious about that woman. Is she gonna kill Celeste? Is she actually gonna do it? I murder some homeless girl? Are you nuts? I'm not doing it. David, oh my God. I said Celeste isn't going to be a happy camper. Oh, I said I can't right. make I, me I, I, do I, this I, to I, her I, anymore. I love her. Maybe we should do it. He should be an actor. He's really good. He's a professional bullshitter. Let's do it. Have a little soup. It's so warming. Is that the dress she is wearing when feeding homeless? Okay, Marie Antoinette. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> Roy? What? Aunt Celeste. <laughs> Aunt Celeste. Is this woman her niece? There's a plot twist agency coming. What are you doing here? I uh, left college. You and... left college. <laughs> you mean you left? You don't mean you left college. Where are we going? You're going home. Celeste, I want to act. Don't say that. I want to act ever, please. And may I have autographs? Yes, to who? To I? Well, you're not exactly making it seem unappealing, love. You see me as a role model? Yes. You want to end up like me? I need a cab! I'm huh? staying, I... Celeste. Are you serious? I'm very serious. All right, if you're staying, you're staying with me. I am not going to let this work to her advantage, okay? We need to be smart. All the kids around me thought I was evil. Now look at me. Nurse Nan, David, I cannot be the villain forever. I I'm sweet and tender. I I'm a victim. Sweet and tender are not the words that come to my mind immediately when I look at her. I'm sorry, I cannot get over Casper. That woman was taunting a dead child. The actor that wrote you that time. The one Celeste had the affair with, the one she hated. Jeffrey Anderson. Yeah, she had him thrown off the show in 1912. Bring him back. Hi, Jeffrey. David Barnes, producer, Sun Also Sense. Can I buy you a drink? You look a little parched. Uh, yeah, yeah, thanks. Okay. So what, what exactly would I be doing on the show? Well, we thought, actually, that you'd, you'd just return as the original character. Oh, OK, so he's an old actor from the show. Well, I mean, stranger things have happened. Bold and Beautiful keep reintroducing the uh, same characters over and over again. Rod Vandal returns to Fleurville as a world-famous doctor. He's been studying in Europe. I like it. Shortly after returning to Fleurville, mm -hmm. Dr. Rod Randall 
Mm-hmm. Starts a torrid love affair. Mm-hmm. With Celeste Talbert. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I cannot make out what he thinks of that. Is he not happy? She was the one who had me axed off the show 20 years ago, you know. Oh, so not happy. We had something. There was a fire, passion. No. She wanted to be a big star. Nothing else mattered. Love, nothing. But now, here you are, out of the blue, offering me a, another chance. Wreck her life the way she wrecked mine. Ooh. Okay, so that was definitely planned. Rod Randall is back from the dead? How yeah. dumb is this? The man was killed in 1973 in an auto accident. We give him reconstructive surgery. What are you talking about? The guy was decapitated. I looked it up. Well, that complicates things just a bit. You can't really bring someone back who's lost their head. How am I supposed to write for a guy that doesn't have a head? They froze the head. Will you use your imagination? Oh, he doesn't have a head! They froze the head and then sewed it back on? Boy, you're reaching. Jesus. What is this horseshit? Rod Randall comes back from Vienna? How in the name of God is that possible? All right, well, we haven't figured that out yet. Sorry, I thought this was my dressing room. Hello, Celeste. Oh! Oh! Oh, Rod. This is not the time. I must think of the poor deaf girl upstairs. Oh. Ooh. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Dr. Monica DeMonico, the neurosurgeon. Monica DeMonico. Sure, I'll go with it. Maggie, I know we've had our differences in the past, Maggie. but... Maggie! What's with this dude? Is he training with Richard Simmons or something? What is going on here? This is not clothing. Like, he, he might as well just take it off. And why is he always sweaty? Something wrong with him? I was at the gym doing leg lifts when Father Corey told me about your experience at the soup kitchen. Bolt, I didn't realize you'd be here. Well, I am. I'd like you to meet my husband, Bolt. Sweaty Mac Sweatpants here. Looks like he's about 25. Okay. Ooh! Well, ooh la la. I'm sorry, I, I, uh, I, I forgot the line. Can I do that again? I was still rolling. I'm ready when you are. I'm sorry, deaf, one more time. And we'll pick it up from the kiss. Right. Is she traumatized? <sighs> <laughs> Sorry, I uh, just didn't feel anything. One more time. Maggie. Yeah. Oh! That's a cut scheme. That one was good for me. That was completely unprofessional. That was unprofessional? What was that crap you were trying to pull on me, huh? Don't flatter yourself. I'm here for me. I got a chance at a career, and I'm not going to blow it this time. What happened to your career was not my fault. That's not how I see it. Yummy. With a spoon. He's mine. You touch, you die. I'm, uh, Lori Craven, the homeless mute. Of course. You speak beautifully for a mute. Give my aunt a break. Who's your aunt? Celeste is my aunt. Celeste is your aunt? Yeah. So you're her niece. So you think I should take movement classes? Absolutely. Very important. Is he gonna start dating her niece just to get back at her? Oh, this is turning out to be fantastic drama. I am so here for this. Am I going too fast? Yes, but it's okay. It's okay. We need more drama in this. Jeffrey, I really like you. You do? Yes. Oh, would you like to have dinner? Yes. Hello. Hi, Rose. Hi, Henny. Hi. Did you have a nice evening? Oh, he was very charming. Who? Jeffrey Anderson. Didn't I tell you I was going out with him? Oh, please. Oh, what? God. What? 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 What's the matter? What do you mean, what's the matter? They went to dinner, so? He's not entitled to go to dinner with her. Why? God! This could look like you're jealous. No, this could look like she is hyper dramatic. Very fitting for a daytime TV star, but a little bit weird for a middle aged woman. Just say it. What are you doing? Is she gone full mental now? Plus, I thought she didn't like turbans. Ah. <laughs> now this is taking jealousy to a whole new level. I have an appointment with Mr. Anderson. He's an 11A? 2D. 2D. When I first asked you out, uh, I, I did it to make Celeste jealous. Really? I couldn't tell. But that's not the case anymore. I genuinely like you. 
What was that? Well, that is, this is weird. What? <laughs> Sweetheart, this is unhealthy. Oh, shoot. Love, if you're gonna be Jason Bourne, at least kick off the heels. Oh! <laughs> This doesn't look good at all, does it? You're kidding. Jeffrey, help me! Oh, oh dear, now look what you've done. I'm, I'm, I'm not familiar with the neighborhood. Well, you get a nice view of it from up here. Uh, here we uh, go, here we go, uh, I got you. Oh. You sure that's why you're here? God, you're so disgusting! <laughs> Laurie! She left ten minutes ago. Why are you here? I live here. Why are you here? I'm here because uh, I... Come on, come on, say it. Uh, I want you, Jeffrey. I'm consumed with jealousy for my niece because I want you for myself. Oh, please. You still have feelings for me, admit it. I have feelings about you, not for you. There's a very big difference. No, you're ashamed of them, but you still have the feelings. You're full of shit. Of course I'm full of shit, but not about that. Oh. <laughs> there. Stay away from my niece. Now that is the definition of a love-hate relationship. There's so much in love that they hate each other. So, she's jealous of the mute, huh? This'll kill her. Yeah, this is great. Angelique collapses. Dr. Reno, later! Dr. Reno sweeps her into his arms and kisses her passionately. Close up. Fade to commercial. Wait, 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 wait. Why are they writing the show? Isn't Rose the head writer? Aren't you supposed to be down there taping? I want that chair. That chair is so ugly that it's amazing. They told me I'm not in it. It's a new scene. I'm not in it. A new scene? I didn't write any new scene. What is this? What are you doing to me? Deeply, wildly in love. No! Get off me! Get off me. Get off me. Get off me. Has she lost her mind? Is she just completely gone? You it's can fine. never kiss her! Of course I can kiss her! No! You can't! You can't kiss her! Why? Because she's your niece? No, you nitwit! Because she's my daughter! And your daughter! What? What are you talking about? We're her parents! We're her mommy and her daddy! <laughs> I did not see that coming. Oh, well, this changes the whole jealousy thing. She was not jealous. She was just trying to prevent incest. This is crazy. This is... I am here for this. I am living for this. It was our fourth date. Oh. Summer 1970, Shakespeare in the Park, a bottle of Chardonnay. Oh, they came so close to... Oh, they came so close to... Ugh. Okay. Yeah. Blah. Oh, I'm just... We're still rolling. God. Yeah. Fabulous. Don't you dare cut it. The show made me sign a paper saying I never mentioned the baby. <laughs> I gave you to Grandma to raise. <laughs> and I made up a twin sister, Simone, who died in a car wreck. <laughs> Said she was your actual mom. <laughs> Wait, so her whole life has been a lie? Oh boy. And why can't I write shit like this? I was terrible to you. I know that. I know that. I know that. I, I blamed you for messing up my whole life, so I had you written off the show, so you disappear. That's all well and good. That's, that's amazing drama. But what is going on with that hair? Are you seeing this? That hair is more drama, though. We need to talk about that. Did she have electrocution or something? Because this looks god awful. Oh, God. Oh, okay. Jeffrey. Stay away from me. <laughs> well, you didn't tell him you were pregnant. You didn't tell him about it, the baby. You didn't tell him that he has been a father for, what, 20 years? What did you expect? I think that worked quite nicely. David, thanks for the scoop. That was incredible. I could not. I could not. My head would explode. 
happened to Celeste was brought on by a flagrant abuse of prescription drugs. Exactly. Thank you, Miss Schwartz. I think what? we've had this in the dark long enough, haven't we? What? I've had the situation under control, and she will be fired by the end of the day. Fired? Who said fired? He said. Celeste is a bad news buffet. The people love her because she is and always will be the queen of misery. But, but no. Ooh. No. Oh, that backfired on you, love, didn't it? She's been through hell. And we're her family. So in this crisis, we have to support her. Yeah. And we have to milk it from every drop of publicity we can get. Okay. I think it's a damn miracle. I'd say amen. I mean, luckily, something held us back. God, can you imagine? Yes, I can. I did. <laughs> I would like it very much if the friendship that we had could phase into a father-daughter kind of arrangement. Yeah. You know, not right away. I mean, you must hate me right now. No, and I don't, blame... I don't hate you. I blame her. Good. You had no idea. None. Speak of the devil. You don't know how sorry I am. I haven't slept a wink. Try sleeping pills. I'm not a genius. I'm just a working actress. Get out. Please try to understand what I'm going through. I don't give a shit what you're going through. There's no need to use that kind of language. Get out! I mean, what did she expect? You created Lori! Hey. Is Andrew from hell? She has more lines than I do, and she's on God damn mute! Oh, 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 oh. He's abusive. Look, I don't care what Tawny Miller says. This hat makes me look like that goddamn Tweety Bird. Do you mind? You're asking me to leave? That's right. I'm asking you to leave. Who does she think she is? She's been on the show for what, three days? I hate you! I hate you, you pig! How fast did things happen in the 90s? The woman's been on set for like three days and she's already acting like she's the Meryl Streep of soap opera. This is my moment. I have to seize it. I don't expect you to be nice to me. I don't expect you to forgive me. What I did was horrible. No, 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 no. Doing hemorrhoid commercials is horrible. What you did, there are no words for. All right, all right, but this isn't about me. What's it about? It's about Lori. You know, I am such a ninny. I left my blue scarf over at your place the other night. Could you bring it in tomorrow? What? You don't, you don't actually believe that I slept with her. I think you'd sleep with anybody, but God, Montana, I feel nauseous. All right, you want to believe it? Believe it. It's none of your damn business anyhow. I don't know how long I can take it. Show after show after show. That pig. <laughs> Which one? Bitch. Oh, you are my father! For God's sake, will you act like it? Montana is desperate for publicity. I feel that I should be a part of this. Oh, oh uh, God. You why should you be a part of this? How could you? You moralizing, please! Hasn't she been through enough here? Don't you dare take my side. This is a seriously dysfunctional family. I'm liking it. I'm on the verge of a breakdown. I'm on the verge of a nervous breakdown. I could conceivably have a breakdown. I mean, can you imagine having to face them on the set every single day? Then leave. You're not that important. It's them or me. That is the bottom line here. They go or I go. You go. You are not that important. You started out as a homeless mute. You are not a star, love. Why should they keep you on? This is the toughest decision I've ever had to make. Dr. DeMonico, can we talk? Now, the real-life soap opera that has been The Sun Also Sets will come to a unique climax as today's live broadcast reveals whether Celeste Talbert, Lori Craven, or Jeffrey Anderson will remain on the show. You mean to say that even the actors themselves don't know the outcome? That's correct. But it's, they don't know the outcome? Jesus, who does she think she is? Why is she all of a sudden acting like she's the most important person on this set? I just, I don't get it. Go! Go, go! Okay. Oh my god, this guy's blind as a bed. Are you having lunch here? I wish it was that simple. It seems that Angelique has a rare case of brake fluid. Brain fever. Yes. Her brain will laterally explore the... Literally explode? Exactly. Within the next three houses. Hours? Yes. It will literally explode within the next three hours. <laughs> Her brain will literally explode? So there'll be brain tissues and, and brain splatter everywhere? <laughs> I'm sorry, Angelique. I really am. I hope it's not too painful. See, of course they're gonna cut her. He's a nobody. Can anything be done? Can anything be done? Yes. 
Yes. Cold compresses. No, no, no. I'm sorry. They, 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 they don't work with cupping. Miracle line. drugs. Nurse Nan. I came as soon as I heard the news. She's a nurse in the restaurant. In full-blown nurse gear. What is she doing? What about a brain transplant? A brain transplant. Yeah, because that sounds ridiculous. Not the fact that her brain will explode. Take my brain. I want to do it. I want to do it. She can't die. I don't think you realize how serious oh, this please, operation is. Please. It's very serious. You will not have a brain when it is complete. Look, Rod. I don't want my brain. I don't need it. Take the goddamn thing. It's gone. This is not in the script. Get David, quickly. Of course it's not in the script. Brain surgery at a restaurant with, what, kitchen tools? Of course it's not in the script, but I am loving it. Let me look. Let me look. Yeah, please. This is for the best. You really positive about this. It's a lot to give up. I want to. It's a relief. It's such a relief getting rid of my brain. It's weighing me down. All for fudge sake. Are you realizing what she's giving up for you? Mother! No! I can't let you do this! She spoke. Ooh. Sudden speech, the last stage is a brain fever. She could blow at any moment! I could always speak. Mother. She's my mother. Montana, shut up! Now this I don't want is your brain. a show. Well, okay, we gotta stop this right now. No! No, 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 I love this. Keep going, keep rolling. Celeste, don't leave the show. I can't live with that. You either, Dad. 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 What are you saying? That, that you might want us for real in life? I think so. You do? Yeah. Now that's TV. Wait! Oh, will you just go back haunting Casper? But I'm carrying his child! I didn't sleep with her! Will somebody please believe me? They will in nine months. A second opinion. This is Dr. Franz Blau of the Sex Change Clinic in Bethesda, Maryland. It's virtually impossible for you to have impregnated your nurse because before she came to our little clinic, she was Milton Moorhead of Syosset, Long Island. Hello. Well, she's gone. She's poof, she's gone. She's a boy. Are you all right? Fine. I'm just gonna go congratulate the others. Mm. See you at left. And the award, the best supporting actress in a daytime drama, goes to Laurie Craven. <laughs> Alright, that was me watching Soap Dish. I now understand semi what that title means. I don't know guys, yeah. I actually, I, I really did like this film. It was absurd, but in a good way. Like it was really highly dramatic. But I liked how they sort of had the plot of the film be more dramatic than the plot of the show. It was just sort of, it was a mess and I liked it. Generally, I like films that are like this highly dramatic if it's a satire, like if it's a comedy dramatic. But this was just funny. So, yeah, I liked it. I would say four out of five. Big names there that I adored made this film amazing. So, can't complain. If you like this video, guys, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe either. I'll see you in the next video.